Yeah. Now, another instance where, you know, just mistakes being made, there was a, a late caution between Denny Hamlin and Michael McDowell. Is that right? Is that yeah. I'm thinking of the same yep. one? And that pretty much knocked McDowell out of out of the race I, completely. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that was a huge hit for him because he's, you know, he's got a few other, you know, two other tracks left, but he's gonna have to race really, really hard now. He's down nineteen points below the mm-hmm. cut line. And I mean, for a, a small team and a small organization that kind of has to pick and choose where they're going to be really good at sometimes, I think they're kind of behind the eight ball. Yeah, I, I think at this point, 19 points is recoverable. You can gain that back. But for Michael McDowell, I think as of this point, he's in a must-win position going into Bristol and Kansas. And I think it's possible that that team can pull something out, I think, at Kansas maybe with a, a car that they bring that has some speed. They could possibly be in contention there, but a lot of things would have to go their way. Um, for Stenhouse, though, the guy just above him had a not great race, but it was manageable. He didn't finish great. He didn't run great, but that's what Michael McDowell needed to do. Michael McDowell was sitting good coming into the playoffs. He wasn't too far back. I think he was maybe eight or seven points outside of the cut line, um, but a day that he didn't have a great car and ended up wrecking and finished like 40 laps down. It just didn't go his way. And I think for that team to be in the playoffs is really impressive. But um, realistically, for them to advance in a must win, it's a very slim chance right now. Uh, they're not in danger, danger yet. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, yeah. they still have two races left. And, and I see these as kind of how Jeff Hammond explained it, where you've got these individual rounds that you're going to have to fight through. Each one of these next, you know, these 10 races in the playoffs is kind of like a little individual Mm -hmm. round. And so we saw, you know, Truex, he used up all of his playoff points. He's now sitting in the bottom half of this uh, 12. He's plus 25, which is still good, Yeah, but he was plus 36. Mm -hmm. And now William Byron is plus 45. Him and William were tied coming Mm -hmm. into Darlington, and now he's like four positions behind him. So, you know, you you can't use up all of these points early mm-hmm. and yeah. and do it twice in a round because you may get bounced. For McDowell, he had a bad race on this first one. Now he's got to come back out and have two good consecutive races. And he hasn't been super stellar at Bristol. But, again, he's been pretty good at road courses. And those short tracks, they tend to be a little bit like the road courses, especially Bristol, where yeah. you're getting a little bit of a rhythm. So I don't think it's – he's, you know – Ride him off just yet. I mean, mm-hmm. down nineteen still. Yeah, a, a it's still possible. Big, it's a just, pretty big deal, but he's got yeah. a shot. So it's for me the reason I'm putting him in a must win is because the drivers in front of him, I think they're going to be more consistent. You arguably they have been all year round. They're in better equipment, um, and then two tracks we're going to that don't really fit Michael McDowell's driving style compared to the road courses and the super speedways. It's possible. It's still possible. Uh, if Bubba Wallace, Kevin Harvick, Ricky Stenhouse, Christopher Bell, Julie Lagana, they go out to Kansas and they end up on the back of a tow truck, then it's going to put them right back in the game. But for f- three or four drivers to end up on a tow truck at Kansas, uh, you'd have to be pretty lucky for the selective ones. Uh, I think it's possible. He's gonna have to win state or win stages. He's gonna have to finish well in stages, and he's gonna have to finish in the top five, top ten in both of these races. Uh, he can't do what Bubba Wallace did this week, which what Bubba Wallace did was he ran a pretty much perfect race to what he had to do uh, for Darlington, where he's not uh, incredible at. He uh, went out there, managed a race, finished in the top ten. If Michael McDowell does that if Michael McDowell goes out and and finishes in the top 10 at both Bristol and Kansas I don't think it's enough points for him to to jump over so he's gonna have to finish well and run the entire race from start to finish in the top 10 and that's you know one reason why I think that Bubba and Tyler Reddick are both sitting really good right now I mean Bubba is one point out Mm -hmm. From being in the round of twelve, and, he's in thirteenth and going to his best. And going track. to his, one of his best tracks, mm-hmm. and he's—I don't know if the right word is—he's been on fire lately. Because when I think of that, yeah. I think you're winning, winning races. Yeah, he has been extremely consistent and doing exactly 
what he needs to do to maintain where he's at in the mm -hmm. playoffs. So him and his crew chief, Booty Barker, they, they're they on the same page. I feel like they're managing one another. You know, Booty's able to manage him pretty well at this moment. And I think if he continues to do what he does and just stay really consistent and keep his race car clean, he he very well could find himself in the you know the top 12 yeah. and then on to the next round. And then he's got Talladega in that yeah. round. And so he, he's pretty good at the super speedways. So I, I think Bubba's got a pretty good chance to move out of this bottom four. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about Harvick. Mm -hmm. He was running a great race. Started yeah. on the inside of row one on one of those restarts. And then we had a caution and they came down pit road. They were pitting. They were from the lead. on the apron when the wreck happened. The caution flag came out. The lights came on. He hadn't crossed the commit line yet for pit road. And he pitted under caution when pit road was closed. And that put him at the tail end of the field and pretty much ruined his day. I mean, running yeah. top five pretty much all day ends up finishing way, way back uh, in the top 20, but he finished 19th. Mm -hmm. So that pretty much sunk the ship for yeah. the four team. And it's not like he just lost winning the race. Come pitting from the lead and and basically right then and there having your race fall apart. He lost points. If he finished, which I'm guessing he would have finished in the top 10, top 5, um, where would he be sitting on points? He'd probably be on the upside of the oh, cut yeah, line at a few points safe. Um, but Christopher Bell would probably yeah, be Christopher in Bell his would position. Probably be in Kevin Harvick's position, and Bubba Wallace would probably be right there next to him. But I think Kevin Harvick, watching him this race, it was the, the first race this year. He's been very consistent, but the first race this year, I've watched him, and I said, I think he could win this. Like, I thought he had a car good enough at the end that he could have stayed out in front of William Byron, Tyler Reddick, and Kyle Larson. Um, didn't fall his way, uh, just didn't didn't happen uh really really unlucky but he still had a good overall day he was in the top 10 majority of the day had some stage points and where he's sitting right now two down two out of the playoff cut line can't write him off going into bristol in kansas no uh, especially bristol which is our cutoff race i i see kevin harvick as a very good driver there um and I think that's what you have to do in these playoffs as a driver who's below the cut line he had a car that was good enough to win the race but he managed in the top 10 and, and had stage points. And I think that's the biggest thing. You can win races, but it is so hard to win races uh, in the NASCAR Cup Series. But the stage points in the playoffs are the biggest things. And uh, for, for him to at least get out of Darlington with some points, um, that's the upside. But really, could have been a huge day for Kevin Harvick.